All right, let's do this. Let's talk about collections. Collections are super important in any e-commerce store. And Shopify makes this very easy for you to do. So let's talk about how to do it. So we have different kinds of products here. And to get to collections, of course, we go products and into collections. Now from this screen, we can create a collection. And this is the name of the collection. And this is the description of the collection here first. So we can call this anything we'd like. For now, we can just do clothing. And for the description, we can write whatever we'd like. This is shown on the collection page. Of course, uh, it's important for SEO and customer and user and product and collection page design and all kinds of things. In the description, we can write whatever we like. This is the best clothing collection ever. All right, so now we have our title and we have our description. We can add an image if we'd like, and that goes at the top of the page. If you have uh, your title here, at the top of the page would be the image as well, and then below everything is the collection. So that's kind of how these three areas these three areas, one, two, and three, work together on the product page. But this is the important part I wanted to get to here. In Shopify, there's two ways you can make a collection. One is manually, and the other is automatically. When you're first starting out, you probably don't have that many products, and it's perfectly okay to use the manual selection of the collection. As the name states, this is very simple. All you would do is you would pick manually which products you want to be in the collection and which products you want to be out of the collection. And that's all it is. When you're first starting out, you probably don't have that many collections. And so maybe you have one or two or three at the top of your store. And it's perfectly okay, especially if the products aren't moving around a lot. If they're on sale, out of sale, discontinued, out of stock, you can just manually place them no problem at all. As you grow and as you scale with your store you'll want to use automated collections and that's how I, this is what i'm going to show you more today so what we can do is we can click automated collections and the automated collections are triggered by conditions in the admin so this is very exciting so what can trigger these conditions shopify you can create automatic collections by these categories here so just looking at these categories this can help you brainstorm different ways and different collections that you can make. It's totally okay to have the same product in multiple collections to fill out your store or for easy navigation. It doesn't matter how the customer gets there. All that matters is they get there in the end. So we want to provide the options of the customer funnel so that the best product we sell and the best product the customer is looking for don't go unnoticed because it's hidden on another page. So what do these product tags mean or these collection conditions mean? You can make an automatic collection by adjusting the product title. For example, in this uh, example hat product, this is the product title. You can create a collection using the product type and that is right here. You can do so by product category, which is here. And this is important for tax rates and this sort of thing. You can do so by product vendor that is here. All this information, as you can see, is found on the product page. You can do so by price, which is super important, which is here. And then if you have multiple variants, you'll have to click into the variant page one more time to adjust the price. You can do so by compare at price. And all that is, is the on sale price or the strike through price, which is found right here. You can do so by the weight. So if it's a physical product, you need to enable this box that says it's a physical product. And then this weight comes into play when you're shipping the item. So the weight is here and the inventory stock level, of course, that makes a lot of sense when you're making collections. This is right here. So if we click track quantity, this is our shop locations that can be multiple. If you have a uh, POS location or your business location or fulfillment locations with multiple apps. You'll see the list here and that could be edited in your location settings. And then of course the variance title. So if you have a product, this is the variant page and you can make a collection, an automated collection by the variance title. So we can see that most of these are specific names. One that is already selected because it's probably the most popular is the product tag, the product tag. If we leave this page, go back to our product page, here is here. This is the product tag section. Uh, this list is just suggestions from other tags that are on other products. So this won't show on your store like this. This is just on my pant example product and my t-shirt example product. And it's saying, if you want to enable the same tags, you can just click them here easily. But the tags category here, you can put whatever you'd like in this category. That's what makes it so versatile. And so you can't do so collections. You can't do so vendor. You can't do so in these other important areas, especially category where 
taxes come into play, all these stuff, but tags aren't seen by the customer. You can put anything you'd like here. And so this means you can put barcode numbers here. You can put SKU numbers or SKU numbers here. You can, you can put anything you'd like. You can, you can put a smiley face if you'd like, and that can be a product tag just for organization in your store on the back end. Another thing that's super important is the price and the compare at price. So you can make a collection with a drop down menu for you know, items over a certain price, but more importantly, very common and easy to use is a on sale collection or a clearance selection. So if you have this automatic collection that sorts by compare at price to make a on sale collection, all you would need to do is select compare at price, say, is not empty and then this will create an automatic collection for any product that has a compare at price so if this was empty this would mean the product is not on sale and doesn't belong in the sale collection but if something is filled here it matches this condition to be not empty and it would go to the collection the on sale collection another easy one you can do is clearance so you can for example use the condition inventory stock and so if you know on a specific product like this hat that you're not going to be getting any more inventory or you don't want to sell this product anymore and you have low inventory of it and you want to get rid of it you can consider making a automated collection called clearance clearance at the top and we can set the condition to be inventory stock is less than five for example because we just want to get rid of these last few orders in any way possible and we can maybe put this on a greater sale with the compare at price to make sure it is enticing for a clearance sale and that can be an automatic collection now an important thing to note here is you can and should sometimes add other conditions to the exact same collection now it gets a little tricky because if considering if you select this collection must match all of the conditions or any of these conditions so we have to be careful how we're setting up our conditions for example let's say we're running a valentine's day sale and in the tag section of this product we can write red just for the color we can see that the red tag has been added. Let's just pretend that this gray hat is red for the sake. We can then make this collection called Valentine's Day, and we can make this an automatic collection if the product is red. So if we do this, we can set product tag is equal to, this will pull any products that are red, that, are, that have the red tag in their product tag section here into this automatic collection. Now, for example, if I add another condition here, that says product title, for example, is equal to hat. Now this is gonna be a much smaller collection because what we're saying here is that the product has to have the tag red in it and it also has to have hat as the name. This might not bring up any results. However, what we can do is if we have the exact same conditions and we select any condition, this changes things drastically. So in this automatic collection, it will pull any product that has red in the collection or any product that has red in the tag into the collection and independently, completely separately, it will pull any product title that is equal to hat into the collection. This would make a much larger collection. If we run another example and I say, I wanted to add product types that are cards for the Valentine's Day collection. If I select all conditions, the product must meet all of these conditions. And if you don't have a product that has red in the tags, is named hat, and also is considered a card, it doesn't really make sense to have a product like this. You won't have anything in your collection. However, if you add these product tags and you select any condition, then you'll have a much wider automatic collection. This will be pulling three things. This will be pulling any product that has red in the tag into the automatic collection. This will also pull any product independently that just has hats or hat in the title independently. And it will also include any product type that has cards in, in the product type. So three different things. These might now at this point not even be correlated to the Valentine's Day sale. And so that's the main difference between products must match all these conditions or any of these conditions. It can be 
very helpful, but at sometimes if you don't select the right combination and you look at this a little bit backward, it can mess you up a little bit. And there's all kinds of fun ways you can spin this because with each condition comes different if conditions essentially. So for example, if we're talking about numbers like a price or a compare at price or a weight, we can see it mentions conditions like is equal to, is not equal to, is greater than or less than. For example, if we're using a product title condition that's not a number, we can see some additional constraints like contains or does not contain. And so this is this all depends on how you set up your products. If you have a large product collection, these can be very, very, very helpful. So just as an example, as we see in our test store, we have four products here. We have uh, some t-shirts with a bunch of variants, some pants, and then we have two types of hats. So let's run an example. One thing to keep in mind when you're running these collections is that the tags and all of this information here is product specific. This is not variant specific. So for example, if I wanted to run a collection for Father's Day where I wanted all my blue items in one collection at the top and you add a tag here that says blue, this is tagging every single one of these variants, including the green, including, including the purple, including the brown. But what you can do is you can create our collection again here and we can include a variant title that contains blue that will only pull blue t-shirt variants and even gives us a little warning message here that says this collection will include all products with at least one variant that matches variants title okay so let's make a quick example as you can see here there are some example titles to name your collection which can also give you some inspiration on what to do based on seasonality based on price or based on staff picks which can be anything really it can be best sellers it can be the products with your biggest profit margins it can be anything like that for now let's make one that says sale In this case we can save this as a manual collection. And then once we get to the next page, we can click browse and we can select whichever product we want in our collection. Very simple. We can add multiple products like this and we can set them and then we can save and this will create our manual sale collection. You can also sort them here by best selling product title A to Z, highest price, lowest price. And this will not only adjust what is seen here, but this is actually the default setting for what is shown on the page. So if somebody clicks onto the sale collection that we've created and it is currently set to lowest price, the filter that will automatically be shown to them will be lowest price. But if we change this to best selling, we can see that it rearranges products, but also when they click on the sale collection, a customer clicks on the sale collection, the default sort by will now show best selling. So that's actually something that might go overlooked. So just for example, for a sale automated collection, we can of course go to compare at price and we can say that this is not empty. I want it to pull anything is on sale and is also a pant. Perhaps this can be a jeans sale collection and it's really as easy as that so keep in mind what we're doing here again if i put this in as compare at price is not empty meaning the item is on sale and the product type is equal to pants with the combination of any collection it will pull products that are on sale and it will also pull pant products so in this case, if we're making a jean, a jean collection for all our jeans that are on sale, in this case, we would want to make sure that the product matches all of the conditions. So now if we click save, we can see that it has pulled our example pants product and that will show on our collection. I would say that a good practice is to have a sale collection like so, and then just having the compare at price automatic condition just as is so that when you put items on sale and you take items off of sale and you can easily edit that with the bulk editor this condition and this collection will automatically update so that you have this kind of ever rotating live products that are in the collection automatically instead of selecting these certain products and then putting them on sale and that sort of thing i hope this helps guys if it does Hit that like button on the video so I know. I just like helping fellow Shopify entrepreneurs as I run multiple Shopify stores and I've been running them for a long time. I remember when I started trying to make collections, understanding the conditions and the any and the all condition rules here were a little 
difficult to understand and they still are a little bit difficult to understand. You know, you're using conditions. Essentially, this is a type of programming where you're assigning rules and if conditions for it to pull specific data. And even when you make code, even if a computer programmer makes code and they think it works out perfectly and it pulls data is not what, and that is not what they're looking for, it can be frustrating. But just take it one step at a time. As you use this more and more, you'll gain inspiration from other stores and how you can use it more effectively, how to add multiple multiple conditions to the same automatic collection. And then as your stock grows and grows and grows, this will become a lot more helpful than manually adding products to the same collection. But that's it guys. Again, if this video has helped you in any way, make sure you leave a like so I know if you wanted to join a Shopify community where we can all grow and learn from our Shopify experiences together, consider subscribing. And if you do, I'll see you in the next video.